Like uh, people watching. No. No, not wrong at all. Oh wow, we don't need that anymore. All right now at least. It's a good one. Hmm. I think that might be a little elixir, a heavy syrupy liquid medicine. Temporarily shifts weight to make deflection of attacks easier, but must be used with care, as it also slows movement with no change to defense. Its recipe for this mysterious concoction is unknown, but some postulate that it materializes only within the most desperate nightmares. I'm gonna be a cheap bastard and buy a gas coin garb. Lower my inside a little because I'm about to pass by some of those church guys. Anything new here? So I don't think I really explained the stats much. Um, vitality, of course, mainly determines your health. Endurance is mostly stamina. It affects your stat resistances too. But not really that much compared to like gear. Strength um, and skill are your primary um, hunter weapon skills. Obviously, depending on the weapon, like, some have the scalings go from, like, I think E, D, C, B, A, and then S is the highest. Uh, depending on the strength of the skill scaling, that's how much that stat affects the weapon. And then Blood Tinge is mostly for bullet weapons and the Chikage. Um, the... that I can think of... The Rifle Spear and the Rider Palish have Strength, Skill, and Blood Tinge scaling. Uh, the Strength and Skill are what affect like the, the weapon attacks, the stabs with the, spe with the Spear or the uh, Rapier, and then Blood Tinge affects the gun attacks with it, so they're kind of separate. 
And then Arcane is for... Uh, there are some weapons that scale with Arcane. You don't get most of them until later in the game. But... Um... Oh yeah, um, it also affects, um, if you notice, like, even weapons like the saw cleaver, saw spear, that don't do any, that only do physical damage normally, they have arcane scaling, uh, D in this case, but some have more. Um... The arcane scaling on a weapon applies to when you buff it with uh, fire paper or bolt paper. I'm not sure if it does when you use the phantasm shell that's a hunter tool. And it also applies if you add a blood gem to it that turns its damage into like fire or bolt. So that's really cool. Uh, that's one of the things that enables arcane builds to be cool. And arcane also affects your item drop rate. And also, these hunter tools I've been talking about that we're not using because we don't have the arcane for them. Um, like, see how the Augur of Ebriettus has S scaling? Um, some of these that like do damage and stuff scale with your arcane. So... These are very useful if you're doing an arcane build, and very flexible. You can get a lot out of them. Um, it's basically like the main way you'd use your Quicksilver bullets, besides parrying. Since you don't, you aren't really going to do much damage with a gun, because you don't usually take any blood tinge. Welcome. Very well. Another thing about scaling? Um, you get diminishing returns with stats, and I don't really remember how they work for these two exactly, um, but universally, you basically don't want to take any one of them higher than 50. I'm pretty sure that holds true for these, but I know for sure with strength, skill, blood tinge, and arcane, when it comes to weapon scaling, if you get them up to 25, that's something like, due to diminishing returns, something like 50% of the effect from what you'd have if you had the stat at 99. And then if you get it up to 50, that's something like 85% of what you'd have at 99. So, pretty much, uh, it's good to go for either 25 or 50 for these four, with one exception. Yeah. So you, like, at that point, even if you don't, like, even if you, if you've got, like, all your attack skills at 50 for your damage, it's usually best to do, like, endurance or vitality until they're at 52. Uh, the one exception to that is arcane, with the hunter tools. Um that what I said about the scaling with arcane holds true for like um, weapons with blood gems or um, using the paper but hunter tools can scale up a lot even past 50 so if you're doing like a real dedicated arcane build it can really make sense to take this up past 50 of course we're not gonna touch it uh, normally for this I would have taken um, I think Uh, sorry. Oh, um, Lone Survivor, and my Arcane would actually be even lower, but I got goaded into a uh, waste of skin, and that's fine, because it's not that big a deal. Another note, I think I mentioned this earlier, is 
raising any stat will raise your physical defense um, by the same amount regardless of the stat. And that's one way that, like, it kind of balances out different builds is because your physical defense will always go up. And you 21k? Farewell, good I think I might be able to get that with my items here. We got some kin cold blood. Cold blood of inhuman kin of the cosmos, brethren of the great ones. Used to gain unspeakable blood echoes. Dare not to delve into the world beyond humanity. The elder truth touched upon long ago at Bergenworth. Let's eat it. Woo! Welcome, what? Very well. Delicious blood. Farewell, good hunt. I don't know if I can get the rest, so let's see if there's another note. Oh, this applies to certain weapons, but definitely the Chikage. Uh, notice how they have both physical attack and blood attack? Um, the physical attack applies when the Chikage is not transformed, and that apply that comes 100% from the strength and the skill. The blood attack is when it's transformed, and it's like draining your health, and that comes 100% from your blood tinge. And this weapon has really good blood tinge scaling. So that's why it's um, such a good weapon if you are using Blood Tinge uh, to be a little bit redundant. So now that we unlock the Nightmare Frontier, we have this lovely headstone. And let's go there. Next time we come here. Oh yeah, one thing I want to point out. Uh, since this is no spoilers, we're not really going to find out why until the DLC. But do you see all those ship masts out there? Is significant. We will actually be seeing more about that later. more of that stuff that only forms in the deepest nightmares. And down here is a death pit, which will eventually be a shortcut. This area is a bit of a maze to navigate, just visually. It's kind of hard to see where you can go and where you can't. Also, here's our first giant, um, uh, what do you call them, those things that you kill, and they evaporate and give you shards. Um, you can see they kind of look like the little guys that we've been killing, except these ones fight back. 
But they do still disappear if you leave them alone long enough. Like that guy. And this is a new kind of wolf guy with the rib cage there. Very, very pretty and kind of that split mouth thing going on. Um, I haven't been letting them do stuff because it can kind of suck if they do. And up here, we have an encounter with a couple hunters that can be pretty tricky. Here comes that guy up on the hill. And he's got a friend, so we want to kind of... get him to come over here and separate them a bit. And here comes, well, there, oh yeah, here comes his friend. And he got that threat again. He just fucked him up pretty bad though. No, it's wet. And that was pretty much one of the toughest things in the... Yeah! That was pretty much one of the tougher things in the Nightmare Frontier. We could have gone here much earlier. Like right after we killed, um, Vicar Amelia. And that probably would have been a lot more of a challenge. But I wanted to save the nightmare until after I killed Rom. Let's go up here where one of those guys was standing. Here's one of the best areas in the whole game, and I say best with sarcasm quotes. Hit Fading Lake, which I don't think has any new lore notes. Nope. But that reduces your fire damage, you take a bit. Before we tackle this poison swamp over here, yes, this is the blight town of the game, we're gonna go over here. And kill Mr. Ambush. Get some free blood. This is another quote-unquote good area. Okay, now I want to get the hell out of there. See that? That sucks. You do not want to get hit by that. Um. The debris has a huge and disjointed hitbox, and it can hurt you a lot even being close to it, and a direct hit will pretty much kill you, so we want to avoid that. 
Fortunately, as long as you sprint, you're pretty much fine. And there's two more up there. There's a bunch of regular bloodstone shards on these guys here to troll you. Risk your life to get them and it's like... Yeah, the, uh, so you see how huge that rock explosion is? The hitbox is, like, deceptively big. So, um, yeah, it's huge. <laughs> oh, no! That's what happens if you let one actually hit you. Unfortunately, like any other NPC hunter, we don't have to deal with those two guys again. <laughs> and they still want to take care of this guy up here because he can and will throw rocks at me while I'm dealing with the other guy. The other guys, I should say. Because there's a few of them. Or a couple of them. through probably the scariest part.
And if we'd fallen down, instead of dying, we would have ended up in the poison bog. Well, unless we died from fall damage. And we would have died. Also... Shame on me. Forgot to equip that one. All this is is a scenic vista here. Well, you could drop down, but we'll be going there eventually. Oh, actually, we just were there. This is back near the beginning. And we've got that lovely trail of coins leading to that item. We're gonna ignore that for now. That little bit of obvious pain. To this cave. Sorry, just taking in the view. Oh, whoops. Whatever. Yay, you've got Clockwise Metamorphosis, which I think, unfortunately, is the HP one, which can be useful, but. I like the stamina one better. Now let's go back up here. And carefully make our way along the ledge. This reward and kill this Brody guy. I don't know what they're called, but they're Brody. Aww. They spit poison at you? That's red, that means rapid poison, which is faster than slow poison. I actually, like, genuinely have no idea how fast Rapid Poison is, because I've... I'm jinxing myself right here, I guarantee you I will soon, but I've literally never been afflicted by it, so I couldn't tell ya. There's that guy we didn't fail to kill. Stunning deep sea. No new lore stuff, that just does rapid poison resistance, which I have never used this rune either. So here's where I go into the drink. And I'm probably gonna get killed by the guy that I, um... Stop in here. Do not. 
Oh, maybe so. No! See? See how much that hurts? Even if you're not, like, in the target zone? So let's run the wrong direction. So now that I have that shortcut, I am going to try and clean out the rest of this area. Mm. Okay, this is lines back at the beginning. So the giant we killed, or that we dropped down into this area and then killed, um, would have been throwing rocks at us too if we'd gone through here before killing him. And there is no way really to get to him from here. So that's um, a pretty good reason to kill him. So, I don't know if I talked about, um, negative status resistances, like, um, poison and stuff, but, um, the way they work is you have that bar that fills up, and when it fills up, it's afflicted, and then it comes out, you're not afflicted anymore. And your resistance? Um, all it affects is... The effect of that bar, like, with respect to how long it takes to fill up. I'm pretty sure it drains at the same, like, rate. Like, it takes the same amount of time for it to go away, regardless of your resistance. But your resistance just take, makes you take longer to get afflicted. So when you're running around in this poison bog that's full of poison, it kind of pointless to have poison resistance because you're getting afflicted all the time anyway. Just more slow poison resistance, which, like I said, isn't that useful. Even when we are in the poison zone. So let's just run along the edge here, out of this guy's range, and go murder him before he throws more rocks at us. That's all the giants. 
I think officially they're called Giant Lost Children. Like in the name. Vegetation that commonly grows in cold blood in a place long ago abandoned. I think that's something you often find like in the chalice dungeons, but apparently this place was counted long ago abandoned too. Let's see if I can make it to the next um, checkpoint type thingy slash shortcut, because I'm not sure if I'm gonna. Those brain guys here suck. They are the worst. I think their f official name is uh, Winter Lanterns. And whenever they are in your line of sight, you build up frenzy. killed me if I hadn't used the sedative. Oh, wow. That was lucky. So one of the most quote-unquote fun things about Frenzy, you may have noticed, is how it keeps building up after the source has gone away for a while. And you take a huge percentage of your health and damage when it happens. It's kind of like bleed from, um... Except... Yeah. We don't. Speaking of precarious... Hey, there are those... Shit masks again. Fallen down there, and I think we just straight up die. Yep. That singing means there's a winter lantern nearby, and um. I think they're below us, so I don't think it's something we have to worry about now. Oh, 
Oh, I forgot to explain what the light elixirs do. And what they do is basically they like increase your poise, um, make it harder to stagger you. So it's kind of like Metal uh, Mario where you can just tank their things and hit stuff. But like the description says, it doesn't increase your defense any at all. So it's pretty easy to go overboard with it and um, get hurt very bad. So you kind of have to keep it about you. You're not going there yet. And honestly, I don't really want to deal with that mess down there until we get this shortcut up here. takes us back up to this area. Back near the beginning. So now that we got a shortcut. Mm. Let us prepare. Gotten the oh, we did get some chunks. Upgrade. <clears throat> and notice how my blood attack goes up way more than my physical attack. That's because of that A scaling on the blood tinge compared to the C and E scaling on strength and skill, or skill and strength respectively. I never changed that? Jesus. Well, now, I want the frenzy resist. See, it basically just made my bar bigger, and now it has to drain back. Farewell. 
the reason I'm saving these is you lose them when you die, or you don't lose them when you die, and you do your normal blood echoes, so might as well not until you're gonna spend them. Farewell, good mate. Upgrade my blood damage. And let's go to the correct headstone. And back to the nightmare. Um, not really, no. It really just affects, like, um, what stuff you can equip. Um,. Your endings are mostly affected um, by one choice you make at the end of the game and one other thing. Yeah, see, I didn't need to hit that guy a third time to kill him this time. down here. Oh. Whatever. So now let's fall for the really obvious trap here. Oh, there was a note. This way to witness a miracle. <laughs> If you remember Patch's MO from Dark Souls, this might be familiar. <laughs> and he laughs at us. Seriously, come on. There we go. And yeah, we're down in the poison swamp again. The requisite poison swamp to dark holes. And That's the way back to normality. So 
so we're gonna go the other way. Yeah, this is the exit. Never mind. This is one of the reasons I wanted to go back and stalk on blood piles. Two other disappearing guys on it, but that's not really a big deal. Oh. No, don't mess up the timing on that. I think we got all the items in here. And do you hear that singing? Sounds in Bloodborne. Oh damn! I didn't even notice it was giving me frenzy. I am actually gonna wait on that because I only have three sedatives. was a lot better. And now hopefully this will stop before I fill up. Yep! Messenger's gift. I'm not gonna die while I read this. That's another hunter tool. A strange gift from the messengers. Inhabitants of the dream who revere the brave hunters. He used to envelop oneself in a black nightmarish mist then transform into a messenger. The illusion is a parlor trick, and any large movement will break the spell. To preserve the guides, proceed very slowly. And that's just uh, another hunter tool, and that's kind of... It's like the illusion spell in Dark Souls, it just kind of disguises you as a messenger for a little bit. And... We're just gonna... pull Hunter's Mark back from here. We're done with this place except for the ending part. You get two from the shortcut.
love finishing off enemies with uh, transformed L1 to switch it back to non blood draining mode. Okay, and now here's our second poison swamp, because we know there's always got to be another poison swamp. Just part of it, because there's a bunch of items. It's just clogged into the dead end of the crap. Let's see, this is all the places we've been in. Hey! Fun. Some maze here. Anything going down here? <sighs> Beautiful. Swamp. Now you gotta be careful. Using the blood draining mode of the Chicago when they're to poison. Cause that can build up kinda fast. That's another one of those enemies where, like, the longer you take to deal with them, the worse it becomes. Eventually I'll get my sword right. Great deep sea. 
on the return. And head back to the drain to stock up on good. That's for great deep sea. And a little bit to all resistances. Again, not even really as useful as the slow poison one that does twice as much. And that conveniently gets rid of my souls, because the next time I'm going to do is fight a boss. I apologize, but I need to head back to the, I need to head to the restroom before I do this. I will be right back.
See that building up there? We are we are actually gonna go there later. If you play the game before you might recognize it. And that is an indication that this is all one nightmare. We'll see other parts of it, but they are all connected. are related to that also. Not the building we saw, because it was like way up there somewhere. And I don't know, I usually just for whatever reason wait on this boss. So let's see how I do. Laser 
laser beams. off its own arms to use his clubs against me. <sighs> and I got the Ailing Lauren chalice for that, which is another chalice dungeon chalice. Lauren is a tragic land that was devoured by the sands. The tragedy that struck this ailing land of Lauren is said to have its roots in the scourge of the beast. Some have made the dreaded extrapolation that Yarnum may be next. And that's it for tonight. I have a, an anime date with a friend, so I gotta hop off for now. It was super fun, and I'm glad you could make it. Very well. Farewell, good mate. Let's see, next I've got a hargle. See you later.